In this video, I'm gonna show you my top three Acara devices and how I use them around my smart home. I'm gonna show you how I use the Acara vibration, water leak, and wireless button in my home automations. Now, I think these automations are awesome. My wife thinks they're fine, but fine is a big improvement. This is fine. Welcome back to Future Smart Home. My name is Ben, and this channel is all about simplifying your life with smart home technology. Let's talk about the Acara vibration sensor. And if you're wondering, what could I use a vibration sensor for? Don't worry, I had the exact same thought and I bought one anyways. But now I have a great use for them in my house and I wanna show you. At night when we're doing dishes, sometimes the sink can be really dark if you forget to turn on the lights. And usually remember to turn on the lights when you're doing the dishes and your hands are wet. To make it easier, I turn this into my switch. Okay, so how did I do that? It's actually pretty easy. Our sink here has a hose that's connected all the way down below it. And I attached a vibration sensor so that when I pull down on this, it pulls up on that hose, shakes the vibration sensor, turns on the lights. Now, if you don't have a sink like this, you could put the vibration sensor on the bottom of the sink and just give it a little bang like that, or even on the side. There's a lot of different ways that you could control this without necessarily having to dry off your hands and touch a light switch. So let's jump into Home Assistant and I'll show you exactly how this works. This automation is really fun. There is one trigger, a couple of conditions, and a few actions that we take. So the first trigger is that that Acara vibration sensor starts to detect motion or vibration. So anytime that sink is pulled, or sometimes if there's like a lot of water, it will actually detect vibration, which is great because that means the sink is being used and it probably needs to be brighter. Uh, so that's the first trigger and that happens all the time. But then a couple of conditions are evaluated. So the first thing it checks is, is this has a sunset? And that's just to make sure that the light isn't turning on in the middle of the day. The next condition is whether the kitchen sink light is off. Because if it's already on, we don't need to tell the light to turn on again, just to make it easier. So once those conditions are evaluated as true, we take a couple actions. The first, turn on the kitchen sink light, pretty straightforward. Uh, the next is I wait for the vibration sensor to reset. And so you can look at the vibration sensor and the trigger is stopped detecting, detecting vibration, which just means that there's been no uh, additional pulls on the sink hose and there might not be any activity there. Wait for about 10 minutes and then turn off the kitchen sink light. And I tried a few different time lengths, but 10 minutes seemed to be about the amount of time I would expect the light to stay on. So after 10 minutes, if there's no vibration, it will turn off. Now, one other important thing to mention is that this automation at least in Home Assistant, is of a particular mode called restart mode. And what this means is that if this automation is triggered again, again by sync vibration happening, it will stop any automations that are happening and start over, which is good because what you want to happen is if someone is using the sync again five minutes later or nine minutes later, the timer will reset and another 10 minutes will be added to the clock before the light turns off. Another great sensor is a water leak sensor and you can use these guys anywhere in your home you have issues with water. And the way that they work is if you take a look at the back, these two little pins, as soon as there's water pooling, there's going to be connectivity between these and it'll complete the circuit and uh, send a notification. So you can really put these wherever you want, buy an appliance that you might have issues with with water or somewhere in your basement that you get a lot of moisture. But just to show you how this works, I've got a bucket here with water. And as soon as I drop it in, it's going to start buzzing on all of my devices. And uh, it's a really great way to get a heads up if there's water in your home, which can be very expensive if you don't take care of it. So here we are in Home Assistant. This is a really simple automation. What we're looking for is a trigger. And we're gonna find this device here. So this is leak sensor one. The trigger is that that leak sensor became moist. And I put this little two second duration in 
just to eliminate any false positives. So once we see that trigger, then Home Assistant is gonna send a critical notification. Now, a critical notification, at least in iOS, is something that will break through all of your do not disturb functionality. So even if you have your phone on silent, it's gonna bust through and make a notification on your home screen, which is great for something really important like this. So the way this works, we have a title, water leak detected. We have a message, there's a leak detected in the basement near the boiler. And then there's some data that we need to send as well. And this is what's known as YAML. You just wanna pay attention to the indentations here. So you've got push, sound, name, default, and then critical is what you want for this to be a critical notification. And volume level, I put a zero because honestly a volume level of one, which is the loudest, is a little bit, it's a little bit loud. <laughs> but this still gets my attention, breaks through again any do not disturb modes. So after we send that notification, then Home Assistant will wait for the value of the sensor to change, for it to change back to dry, which you can see right here. And then lastly, send another critical notification because again, this is still important to let me know that the boiler water leak was resolved. Next, we can look at our wireless button and how I use that in my home. So the great thing about these wireless mini switches is you can put them really anywhere in your house. So I put ours back in here and this is where we keep our keys. It's kind of on our way out the door. And this button is super helpful for a lot of different reasons. So if I double tap this, it'll automatically open the garage. So if we're on our way out, we can double tap that. Garage will start opening. It'll be open by the time we're out there. If we press and hold it, the robot vacuum will clean the house, which is great if there's a spill or something needs to be uh, cleaned up. And then lastly, if our kids are watching TV and we really want them to come into the kitchen, press this button once and it'll automatically turn off the TV. For this button sensor, there are a few automations that I have here in Home Assistant. So the first is opening the garage. This car remote has a different action or trigger for a couple of different states. So this one is double clicked. One is just when it presses. One is that it's been continuously pressed. One is that it releases, it's been released after a long press. And you'll see examples of how I use each of these but just so you can see, there's a lot of different ways that you can use that button. So we look for, in this example, the trigger double-clicked. So when that button is double-clicked, a couple of actions happen. So first we choose between option one, which is confirming the garage door is already closed. And if it is closed, open the garage door. So that's this action here to open the garage door. If the garage door is open, then we'll close the garage door. So that double tap can be useful in multiple ways. It can open the garage door and it can also close the garage door. But just in case something happens, the default action is to open the garage door, which is what usually I use it for 90% of the time. So that's the first uh, version of this. The next is starting the robot. And this one is looking for that trigger continuously pressed. I call this like a long press. It's a really simple trigger. Once it gets that trigger, it sends a notification to our Roborock to start cleaning. And then lastly, turning off the TV. So this one is looking for pressed, which is equivalent to just pressing it once. And when the button is pressed once, we then take an action, call a service, which is this media player service, turn off, looking for the entity Samsung frame, which is the TV in our living room. Let me know in the comments below how you're using your car devices. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like these videos, please consider subscribing to see more. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the future.